Shalom, shalom, shalom. Baruch Hashem Elohim. Baruch Hashem Abaya. Baruch Hashem Adonai Hamashiach. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, sisters, we ask that you cover your heads. Brothers, we ask that you uncover your heads. Uh, this uh, lesson is really going to be dealing with sources outside of the Bible. That's the whole point. But we are going to read two. Um, we are going to read two precepts, and you know we're going to open up with prayer and close with uh, close with prayer. So, sisters, cover your heads. Brothers, uh, uncover your heads. That's for members of the body of Christ. If you're not a member of the body of Christ and you're a muggle and you don't want to do that, that's on you. All right. But for members of the body of Christ, sisters, cover your heads. Brothers, we ask that you uncover your heads. All right. And we're going to open up with prayer um, really quick. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that you've allowed us to come together and to prove Christ, your son, and to prove you and to prove your word and to prove that you exist. We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. And I personally, Father God, thank you and give you glory and honor. And thank you for giving me the wisdom and the knowledge and the insight to be able to uh, share this knowledge with people. And there's other people who have this insight as well. And I thank you for those people as well. And I thank you, Father God, for using me as a vessel on your behalf and on behalf of Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. So, y'all know how I'm always saying if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, right? So, this is this is going to be a short little um, lesson dealing with proving that Christ existed. We're going to prove Jesus existed using sources outside the Bible, right? And we're also going to uh, show you that uh, Jesus was indeed a black man as well, showing you, so giving you imagery proof of how Jesus was documented uh, during, basically from like 100 AD, 200 AD, like the first century, second century, third century uh, AD. And the reason why we're doing this, and this is for... Uh, all the body of Christ can uh, benefit from this. If you come across a muggle, a unbeliever, whatever, if you're African-American and let's say you come across one of those hotep weirdos or you come across, huh? I can't hear you. I know. I know. It is going to be like that. That's all part of what I'm doing. <laughs> It's all part of how this is being done. All right. Uh, so anyways, and if you have any, uh, you know, Hotep friends, Kemet, Egyptologists, uh, whatever, that try to be like, oh, Jesus doesn't exist. Or you have friends that, you know, are atheists for the Gentiles. You'll be a lot of you. You might have friends, family who are atheists or who believe in like Europe you know, have reverted back to European paganism or whatever. Point is, is they don't believe in, they don't believe in Christ. And they say to you, prove that Christ existed. There's no evidence that Christ existed outside of the Bible, right? Well, this lesson is to solve that problem. So if that comes up in your life, right? And, you know, you can just point to this lesson and use it for that purpose. So that's basically what we're going to do, right? And... Let me start with that. All right. Let's do, 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 do.
All right, I'm going to remove myself. All right. So this is just to give you all an example of why, why we're doing a lesson like this, right? So um, this is, let's see. I'm just going to show you these comments. All right, so this is from the history lesson we did, Slave Ships, Photographic Proof, Refuting Dane Calloway, Part 2. Um, you know, we get people who contact the church and stuff talking about uh, African Americans. They're not Israelites. They're really Native Americans. And Black people are indigenous to America, yada, yada. Check out Dan Calloway, blah, blah, blah. Right? So did... Uh, you know, did a couple um, history lessons or chop sessions dealing with that nonsense. And in the course of that, all right, and it's not just uh, the Dane Calloway, we get, uh, we get comments uh, from our history lessons a lot and, and from some of the, uh, even from our uh, Sabbath services, our Bible, our Bible studies, our Sabbath services, uh, even Q and A sometimes I've had at least like a hundred comments that have come since we started the church like three years ago, since in that time span of like over three years, I've had at least over a hundred comments or messages sent to us, uh, kicking against Christ or saying Christ doesn't, Christ doesn't exist. Prove Christ exists. There's no evidence. Christ exists outside of the Bible. Prove that. Right. Like we get that, that comes in hate mail, all kinds of yada, 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 right? So we're just going to deal with that tonight real quick. This is going to be hopefully a short chop session, chop session, just putting that to bed, all right? But I just wanted to give you an example of why we're doing this lesson and uh, show you what we deal with, right? So this was from a week ago. Whoever this person is, Trey Miller commented on this video, you know, and again, this lesson we did. This chop session on this video was just showing you because Dane Calloway said there's no photo evidence of slave ships, which is ridiculous because at the time the slave trade was going on that he's referring to, there wasn't photograph there. They didn't have photographic cameras for most of it. But once uh, that photographic cameras became a little bit more available, like in the middle 1800s, there are pictures of slave ships. So I presented that. But, you know, whatever. So. Here we have whoever this person is, Trey Miller. They said, y'all believe in Jesus. Y'all can't be for real. I don't, I'm 37. I'm married. I got a job. I have a life. I don't know these emojis. So I don't know what that is. I guess he's laughing at me like with tears or something. I don't know. Peak my interest and tell me, when did the fictional character Christ get his name Jesus Christ from in 6 B.C.? If the letter J and its pronunciation wasn't introduced into use until the 1500s. So I responded back. We, if, you know, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. We have a lesson um, dealing with that, right? So I responded with posting that lesson. Then we have this other guy who post who commented earlier today, Spike Williams. He says, a man named Jesus isn't documented in the history books only in biblical terms so he's not real just an idea and then again some emoji which i'm just like whatever i guess you're trying to be the smartest person in the room oh he's not real it's just supposed to be an idea right and he says a man named jesus isn't documented in the history book i responded i have a ba that's a bachelor's in history and a master's degree in social science and you think i believe and someone who did not historically exist, you fool, right? And for the and for the followers of Christ, uh, there's an appropriate time to call someone a fool. Paul is. You can read in the epistles. Paul calls people fools. This would be an appropriate time in the beginning of all of our lessons, right? Right. Even now, even when we do our Bible study, our Sabbath class, don't in the beginning I put my educational background. Right. So why on earth? Right. Would someone then be like, oh, he didn't exist in historical books. And I'm a historian and I'm here dealing with Christ. And you don't think I did the bare minimum, the fact check that this dude really existed. 
All right. That anyways. So showing you that example. And remember, Christ said, Christ said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before the father. Right. So this is why I don't deny Christ. I go hard in the paint for Christ. Right. So that's what we're going to do here tonight. All right. So then here's another one. And then we're going to get into uh, the point. Do, do, do. do I want to say, read what this dude said? No, that's not relevant. We have two more down here, or one more down here. Oh, you can see there's bad language on here too. F your God, Christianity, home of the clan. F your God. Um, but I know Jesus is fake, blah, 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 right? But here, this lady, Aya Days, she says, you know, you going to hell, right? And okay, I'm like, whatever, I responded to that. Do you even know what hell is, right? Like, are you talking about the lake of fire? Or are you talking about the grave? Because most of the time in the Bible, when it's referring to hell, it's actually referring to the grave. But I digress. Uh, she then says, can you prove Jesus actually existed out of what people say? I'll wait, right? So now, like I said, we've had this come up like act, uh, people make these hate comments and derogatory comments uh, towards us and saying Jesus doesn't exist. Give us an example outside of the Bible where they talk about Jesus, a uh, historical proof. Right. So that's what we're going to do tonight, because at this point, I've gotten sick of getting these. I'm tired of uh, responding to them and putting e like each time having to give examples or evidence so i'm just going to do this lesson so if this ever comes up again then just boom you know just here you go here's the reply what proof do you have that jesus existed outside of the bible here you go we just gave you three four five historical sources and we put it in video format so that you can watch it and listen right because most of these people are probably not going to really get involved in reading and studying anyway right now, let's move this off. All right, let me know if it's okay for my big head to be on the side or not. All right, so historical proof Jesus existed and was a black man, all right? And no, we're just dealing with facts. He was black. The imagery, the earliest depictions of him show him as black, right? And we're just going to show you that. That's We're just dealing with facts and truth here, okay? Now, just as a mind trick on you, this picture in the background here for the title that's actually not from ancient times. That's uh, a Coptic painting, and it's from like 300 years ago. All right. So we're going to start off with Tactius. And shout out to Brother Malcolm, because I was going to leave uh, Tactius out. I forgot about Tactius, and he had reminded me of him. So shout out, Brother Malcolm. Do I need to take my head? Uh, take myself off and just have it full screen. Uh -huh. All right, y'all let me know if you want me to take myself off and I'll take myself off. All right, Publius, uh, and when I say let me know, make sure it's people who follow the church, not like we have trolls or someone in there saying, all right. Publius Cornelius Tactius, right? And he lived from 56 AD to 120 AD circa, right? So roughly, was a Roman historian and politician. Tactius is widely regarded as one of the greatest Roman historians by modern scholars. He lived in what has been called the Silver Age of Latin literature and has a reputation for the brevity and compactness of his Latin prose. 
as well as for penetrating insights into the psychology of power politics. The surviving portions of two major works, The Annals, Latin Annales, and The Histories, Latin Historie, examine the reigns of the emperors Tiberius, Claudius, Nero, and those who reigned in the year of the four emperors, 69 AD. These two works span the history of the Roman Empire from the depth of Augustus in, the four, in 14 AD to 70 AD in the first Jewish-Roman War of 66 to 73 AD. There are substantial, there are substantial lucanae in, in the surviving texts including a gap in the annals that is four books long. The Roman historian and senator, Tactius, referred to Christ, his execution by Pontius Pilate, and the existence of early Christians in Rome in his final work. I'm going to repeat that. Now, this dude, this guy is not a Christian. He's not a father. This isn't, a, this isn't from the Bible, right? This is a Roman historian. Okay? who was alive in the time of the disciples, right, in the early church. And he's a Roman historian, okay? All right, so this has nothing to do with the Bible, all right? Because people are always like, who, give me proof Jesus, Jesus existed outside of the Bible. And I'm like, you muggles, man. It's just like, literally, you muggles. All right, where were we? The Roman historian and sen Senator Tactius referred to Christ, his execution by Pontius Pilate and the existence of early Christians in Rome in his final work, Annals, written circa AD 116. All right, so notice here, he referred to the fact that he confirmed, yes, Christ was crucified. Pontius Pilate was involved, right? He confirms that as well too. And he confirms the existence of early followers of Christ. Okay. Now, and this dude was a politician, a government official. Besides being a historian, he was a government official in the Roman Empire. Okay. Now, let's keep going. Book 15, chapter 44. The context of the passage is the six day great fire of Rome that burned much of the city in AD 64 during the reign of Roman Emperor Nero. The passage is one of the earliest non-Christian references to the origins of Christianity. The execution of Christ described in the canon canonical gospels and the presence and persecution of Christians in first century Rome. The scholarly consist consensus is that Tactius' reference to the execution of Jesus by Pontius Pilate is both authentic and of historical value as an independent Roman source. Paul Eddy and Gregory Boyd argue that it is firmly established that Tactius provides a non-Christian confirmation of the crucifixion of Jesus. Scholars view it as establishing three separate facts about Rome around 60 AD. One, that there were a sizable number of Christians in Rome at the time. Two, that it was possible to distinguish between Christians and Jews in Rome. And three, that at the time pagans made a connection between Christianity and Rome and its origins in Roman Judea, All right? So here we have the passage uh, from Tactius works. This is from the Annals passage 15.44 which has been subjected to much scholarly analysis, follows a description of the six-day great fire of Rome that burned much of Rome in July 64 AD. The key part of the passage reads as follows. Translation from Latin by A.J. Church and W.J. Broderib, 1876, right? So we're not going to read the Latin part. We're just going to read the English translation translation, but all human efforts, all the lavish gifts of the emperor and appropriations of the gods did not banish the sinister belief that the, conflag the conflagration was the result of an order. Consequently, to get rid of the report 
Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite torture on a class hated for their abominations, called Christians by the populace. Christus, from whom the name had its origins, that's referring to Christ, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procreators, Pontius Pilatus, and a most and a most mischievous superstition thus checked for the moment again broke out not only in Judea, the first source of the evil, but even in Rome, where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world find their center and become popular. Accordingly, an arrest was first made of all who pleaded guilty. Then upon their information, an immense multitude was convicted, not so much of the crime of of firing the city as of hate as of hatred against mankind. All right, so notice here Tactius, who was alive during the time the, the disciples were alive, confirms Christ existed. All right, confirms he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. All right, and this and remember Tactius is not a Christian. He's not a follower of Christ. He's not a Jew. He's not an Israelite, right? He's a Roman. And he's a Roman politician and a Roman historian, right? Evidence number one. All right, let's look at evidence number two. The extant manuscripts of the book Antiquities of the Jews, written by the first century Jewish, Jewish historian Flavius Josephus around, 90, around 93 to 94 A.D., 66 years after Christ's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, also still within the lifetime of firsthand witnesses of Jesus, i.e. the disciples, contain two references to Jesus of Nazareth and one reference to John the Baptist, right? So we have another historian here, right? This time a Jewish historian. And remember, Josephus wasn't a follower of Christ. Even though he's a uh, you know an Israelite historian, a Jewish historian, he's not a he wasn't a follower of Christ, right? So this is a non-biased source, and he's a historian too. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a matter be established. All right. Besides the fact I'm a historian, I went to school for history. This is two primary sources, and what we're dealing with here, and I'm coming strictly from a historian point of view. What we're, what we're answering here is, is there evidence or proof that Jesus existed outside of the Bible, right? So, and yes, there is. We have two primary sources that confirm, yes, Jesus did, in fact, exist, okay? So it is what it is. Now, the first and most extensive reference to Jesus in the Antiquities found in Book 18 states that Jesus was the Messiah and a wise teacher who was crucified by Pontius Pilate. It is commonly called the Testimonium Flavium. The second reference to Jesus in the Antiqu Antiquities found in Book 20, Chapter 9, mentions the brother of Jesus who was called Christ, whose name was James. A number of differences exist between the statements by Josephus regarding the death of John the Baptist and the New Testament accounts. And the reason, again, Josephus was not a follower of Christ, right? So he was just going off of, you know, I'm a historian, I'm gonna document what I personally can observe or what, you know, what I hear say, I'm not coming from the standpoint of a, you know, a follower of Christ, right? So scholars generally view these variations as indications that that the Josephus passages are not interpolations, since a Christian interpolator would likely have made them correspond to the New Testament accounts, not differ from them, right? This just meaning that this is legit. That's all it means, okay? All right, so I took this just to make the point. This is from the New York Times, published uh, February 13th, 1972. And I am going to remove myself for this also, too, so I can try to read it better, bring the screen closer to myself. All right. 
Jerusalem, February 12th. Uh, February 12th. Following, following are the two controversial passages about Jesus in the antiquities of the Jews. A first century history. All right, we all know what first century means, right? That means the first century is everything from 1 AD to 100 AD, right? Jesus was crucified in 27 AD, okay? So Jesus was alive during the first century AD. Josephus is giving you a historical account and a historical and a historical record of things that were taking place during the first century AD. Okay? All right. Flavius Josephus. The Greek text has long been dismissed by Christian scholars as a forgery. The Arabic text, newly discovered in a 10th century manuscript, has been called an earlier and more authentic version by two Hebrew university scholars. All right? So we're going to look at the Greek text. Some people don't think that the Greek text of this part of... Um, Josephus works is legit, right? But and then we're going to read the Arabic text where most people most scholars do agree that it is a, it is legit. With the Greek text, some scholars believe it is legit, right? With the Arabic text, most believe it is legit. Right? So the Greek text and again, this is a first century account of Christ and proof that he existed, okay? About this time there lived Jesus, a wise man. It indeed, it indeed one ought to call him a man, for he was one who wrought surprising feats and was a teacher of such people as accept the truth gladly. He won the he won over many Jews and many of the Greeks when Pilate, upon hearing him accused by men of the of the highest standing among us had condemned him to be crucified those who had in the first place come to love him did not cease on the third day he appeared to them restored to life for the prophets of god had prophesied these and myriads of other marvelous things about him and the and the tribe of Christians, so called after him, has still up until now not disappeared. All right. So that right there is one of those boom, right? That even confirms even what the Bible said about Christ. But let's look at an Arabic version of this first century account, right? From Josephus the historian. Okay. At this time, there was a wise man who was called Jesus. And his conduct was good, and he was known to be virtuous. And many people from among the Jews and other nations became his disciples. Pilate condemned him to be crucified and to die. And those who and those who have become his disciples did not abandon his discipleship. They reported that he had appeared to that he had appeared to them three days after his crucifixion. And and that he was alive. Accordingly, he was perhaps the Messiah concerning whom the prophets had recounted wonders. Again, this is from the New York Times, published February 13th, 1972. But again, they're quoting what we just read, the Arabic text and the Greek text. This is quoting from Josephus, right? A, his, uh, a historian of the first century AD, okay? And right there, he confirms what the Gospels said, okay? He confirms that, yes, there were people, Christ existed, yes, and there's people who, who lived during the first century AD, right, who believed that he rose from the dead, just like the Gospels tell us, right? I was saying, just like the Gospels tell us, right? All right, let's keep it pushing. Here's another example.
We'll see. All right. The Pilates sun is a damaged block of car. So we're looking at another piece of evidence. The Pilates stone is a damaged block, 82 centimeters by 65 centimeters of carved limestone with a partially intact inscription attributed to and mentioning Pontius Pilates, a prefect of the Roman province of Judea from 26 AD to 36 AD. It was discovered at the archaeological site of Caesarea Maritima in 1961. The artifact is particularly significant because it is an archaeological find of, a, of an authentic first century Roman inscription mentioning the name Pontius Pilatus. It is contemporary to Pilates' lifetime and accords with what is known of his reported career. Right. Remember, outside of like the Bible and Josephus, they don't have that much of uh, dealing with Pontius Pilate. Right. Outside of what the Bible documents. So here is an uh, an actual lime limestone slab from Pontius Pilate. Right. That dates back to the time of Christ. Right. And the time of the early church. OK. Now. Let's, uh, and again, this, this is one of those things too, like I said, just point, like for myself personally, I just got sick of, uh, I just got sick of people kicking against Christ and saying prove he existed outside of the Bible. And I'm just like, okay, well, I didn't think I really needed to do that, but I'll, I'll do that. And then it's still just funny to me because I'm like, they make these comments and I'm like, did you not see in the beginning of the video? I told you muggles, I have a bachelor's degree in history and I have a master's degree in social science education, social studies education. Like I went to school for history. Like, so I'm not going, what would make you think I would be up here talking about Jesus and I didn't, ha and I didn't know that there's other historical references, right? To Jesus outside of the Bible, right? What sense, what sense would that make, okay? But anyways, like I said, I digress. Or like I normally say, I digress. In effect, the inscription constitutes the earliest surviving and only contemporary record of Pilate, who is otherwise known from the New Testament, the Jewish historian Josephus and writer Philo, and brief references by Roman historians such as Tactius. Right? This is from Acts chapter four, verse twenty, verses twenty-six through twenty-eight. Can I get another uh, water? All right. Acts chapter 4 and verse, uh, we're going to uh, look at verses 26 through 28. I saw the comments in the uh, in the in the thing. You you didn't block them yet, or you did? They went off. You finally did? Okay, they said something. Uh, what, it was the Doom 23 and the 24 day? Well, I was like, I don't know, man. If that's what you're saying, you got a word. The other stuff, I didn't see the last thing. What was the last thing they said? Let me see. But I saw I, I saw I was like 90 for 90 percent of what you saying seems seems cool. And then the one about and then doom in the year and all that. So I'm like, you know, hey man. Hold on. You said what? Uh all right, just wait two more years. Yeah. I don't know what we wait in two more years for. All right. Yeah, you gotta let us know what we waiting for so we can confirm stuff. If not, we gotta test. We gotta test the spirits. This is a perfect example. We gotta test the spirits. So declare what you saying, man. Like a, a lot of the stuff was a lot of the stuff was cool. I don't know what you're talking about in two more years. Declare that, right? So we can test the spirits, right? That's even you know what I'm saying. That's shaky. You know, like you kind of coming up shaky, man. But again, like I said, let us know so we can test the spirits ourselves, right? All right, let's keep it pushing. So Acts chapter 4 and verse, uh, verses 26 through 28. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against the, thy holy child, Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod, and we know Herod existed, right? And Pontius Pilate and this source confirms he existed from outside the Bible with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. 
and that was to crucify him, right? And we read earlier where Tactius, Tactius, a Roman historian, non-Christian, non-follower of Christ, who existed during the time of Jesus and the disciples, he lived in the first century AD, confirmed that Jesus was indeed killed under Pontius Pilate's uh, tenure, right? Here's another example. I'll take myself off for this one too, right? The Alex Minos Graffito, also known as the Graffito Blasphemo, or Blasphemous Graffito, 393, is a piece of Roman graffito scratched in a plaster on the wall of a room near the Palatine Hill in Rome, which has now been removed and is in the Palatine Museum. It may be meant to depict Jesus. If so, it competes with an engraved gem as the, as the earliest known pictorial representation of the crucifixion of Jesus. And it's not, it competes with like three, four other, uh, I'm about to show you like three, four other depictions of Jesus. And when we show you the earliest, earliest actual like paintings where you can see of Jesus, he's shown as a black man, like without a shadow of a doubt, the ninja has got an afro. He don't become, he don't start, the earliest depiction of him is white. As white, you can guess when did that happen? Around the time of Constantine and the rise of the little horn, right? But anyways, I digress. Let's uh, keep it pushing. It may be meant to depict Jesus. If so, it competes with an engraved gem as the earliest known pictorial representation of the crucifixion of Jesus. It is hard to date, but has been estimated to have been made between circa 50 AD and 250 AD, all right? So sometime within that 200 year period, right? The image seems, so also let's say, so that's where they place it in, in dating it between 50 AD and 250 AD. Let's say it's closer to 50 AD. Jesus died in 27 AD, right? This, that was his death, burial, and resurrection, right? And then he ascended back up to the third heaven. This is according to the Bible, 27 AD, right? So that being the, if that being the case, right? If this was from circa 50 AD, if Christ didn't really exist, why would they be doing this? Why would they be making fun of, oh, this guy worships Christ who was crucified on a cross? We're gonna show, we're gonna depict Christ on a cross with a donkey head right? To make fun of him. The image seems to show a young man worshiping a crucified donkey-headed figure. The Greek inscription approximately translates to Alex Minos worships his God, indicating that the graffito was apparently meant to mock a Christian named Alex Minos, okay? So I have here in the middle of the slide, all right, here is an actual, the actual depiction all right, the Alex Minos Graffito roughly dated between the first and third centuries AD. In Greek, it says Alex Minos worships God and shows a crucified man with a donkey's head. Okay, and then to the right on the slide, you have a tracing of it so you can see a, a better look at it, right? All right, next slide. And we're about done. The earliest depictions, the earliest depictions and our imagery of Jesus Christ always portrayed him as a black man. While the early church was controlled and ran by Israelites circa 30 AD to circa 350 AD, he was always depicted this way. It is not until Rome and the Gentiles, now having their parentheses Europeans, take over the church that he has changed into a white man, All right? And I have here a source, and I'm gonna pull it up from our website. Download Easter. Oh, it's gonna open up that zip file. Wherefore art you? When in doubt, control F. All right. Easter pagan custom.
All right. All right, this is because right now we're about to sh we're going to show you. Remember how when we did um, I forget what what lesson that was, and if it, it might have been a history lesson, but remember when we did the one where I was showing you where the Egyptian over time how the Egyptians were always depicted even up until Paul's day, and then you saw the gradual change after like the first century AD. Where the you know because the original Egyptians and the Black Egyptians that now most of them have all pretty much gone into Sub-Saharan Africa and further south, how they were depicted as uh, European because you had Greeks and stuff and other people who had migrated mainly to like the northern half of Egypt. Remember? All right, so you're going to notice the kind of the same type of thing here with Jesus in a moment when we look at the depictions of when we look at the depictions of Jesus. And the reason why we're looking at this source here is just to show you that at one point in the early church history, the Israelites or the Jews controlled the church. Then later on, Gentiles or Europeans took over the church. And when you look at the images or the depictions of Jesus, like the drawings of him or the paintings of him from the first century AD, so when Jesus was actually living, and from the second century AD and the third century AD, in the early 4th century AD, Jesus is depicted as a black man, right? But when you start looking at the depictions of Jesus beginning around circa 350 AD, so after Constantine and the rise of that little horn, and when the papacy in Rome had like more legitimacy as far as establishing itself as the false head of uh, the Christian church, then Jesus starts beginning to be depicted as a European or a white man, all right? This is from Passover verse Easter, all right? This is from the Weekly Gleaner, which is a Jamaican newspaper, all right? Today, millions of Christians around the world celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ during this season of Easter, but perhaps most don't realize that it was not until the first fourth century that Easter was uniformly observed by Christians. Notice until the fourth century, right? And you're going to see that's around the same time when I show you these images of what how Christ was depicted. That's when Christ starts getting depicted as white. And, and we're talking about in Europe. All the images I'm going to show you is either from Europe or Syria, right? So it's after like 400 A.D., that's when in Europe, Jesus starts getting depicted as a white man, all right? Now, what the earliest Christians observed in memorial of Christ was the Passover, which occurs at this time of year on Nisan 14, or Abib, on the Jewish calendar. The Palestinian historian Epiphanes, who lived from circa 315 AD to 403 AD, said that the 15 Jewish or Israelite Christian bishops who administered the Jerusalem church until 135 AD observed the Lord's death on Abib 14 or Nisan 14. In the Apostolic Constitutions, an early Christian document, the following rule is laid out. Ye shall not change the calculation of the time, but ye shall celebrate it with the same time as your brethren who came out of the circumcision, the Jews. With them, I observed the Passover. This lines up with scripture. Because remember, Paul tells you in Corinthians, keep the Passover, keep the feast of unleavened bread. The original Christians, the early church, the New Testament church, didn't do Easter. They didn't do Good Friday. They didn't do Lent. Because none of that's in the Bible. What's in the Bible is Passover, and Jesus was crucified on Passover, right? Now, and all this is just showing, just to establish the point that when the Israelites themselves, who Christianity comes from originally, true Christianity, not the false Christianity, they when they were controlling the church and Christianity, Jesus was always depicted as a black man, just like the Israelites look like, right? It wasn't until the Gentiles took over right, the church, that then Jesus started getting depicted as a white man, okay? 
An early Christian controversy was the Quattro Decimin controversy between Christians of the East and the West. The Eastern Christians insisted that Jesus should be memorialized by the observance of the Passover on Abib 14 or Nisan 14, while those in the West, Rome, felt that an independent festival, Easter, not connected with the Jews, should be adopted to celebrate his death and resurrection. Notice here in the West, right? And you know, we always talking about Western Europe and the West, Babylon the Great, the 10th reviving of the Roman Empire, the European Union. Notice here in the West, right? In Western Europe, they wanted to add to God's word, right? And they added Easter and they got rid of keeping Passover. Even though you can't read that nowhere in the Bible, okay? All right, it says there, no pretense. Emperor Constantine settled the issue at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. Constantine is also the one who instituted Sunday worship, right? And then subsequent, subsequently after the papacy, they went along with it when uh, when Christianity, when false Christianity became the official state religion of the Europeans or the Roman Empire. He also did away with the Sabbath, even though you can't read that in the Bible either. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you the Sabbath. You don't have to keep the Sabbath all throughout the Bible in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. It tells you you need to keep the Sabbath. Right. This Gentile comes along. 300 years after Christ, and then out of the figment of his mind, because he used to be a sun worshiper, he tells, he says, no more Sabbath, you know, now just we're going to do Sunday, all right? This is showing you the history behind it. So if you're calling yourself the, a follower of Christ and you don't keep the Sabbath and you go to church on Sunday, you're misled. That's not in the Bible. You do that because you follow Constantine. He made, and the Romans, he made no pretense of his motives for doing so. The following could not be plainer as at the reason for adopting Easter over Passover. It appeared an unworthy thing that in the celebration of this most holy feast, we should follow the practice of the Jews. Constantine was an idiot. Can you hear me? Like he's an idiot. Jesus was king of the Jews. Jesus was a Jew himself from the tribe of Judah, right? Notice this blasphemy that this dude speaks. It appeared an unworthy thing that in the celebration of this most holy feast, we should follow the practice of the Jews who have impiously defiled their hands with enormous sin and are therefore deservedly afflicted with the blindness of soul. Let us then have nothing in common with the detestable Jewish crowd. Strive and pray continually that the purity of your soul may not in anything be sullied by fellowship with the custom of these most wicked men. We must avoid all participation in the perjured conduct of the Jews. It's hilarious to me because it's like Europeans sometimes, it's like they forget Jesus was a Jew. Like in the God that you worship is a Jew. He's an Israelite. He wasn't a European. You follow the religion of somebody else, right? And you do it badly, <laughs> like, Real bad. You don't even do it right. All right. You might as well go back to worship in Thor. There you have it. With that, Easter was imposed on the Eastern Christians who were threatened with expulsion if they continued to meet on the same date that the Jews kept their Passover. All right. So we can stop there. We're not dealing with uh, Easter here. All right. Now, I'm going to have to do it that way. Let's see if it'll go back. Good. Yeah, all right, it did. All right, I'm taking my big head off the screen. All right, uh, let me take off the banner too. All right. So here, this is, uh, this is an engraving, right? Depicting Jesus from about 235 AD, the healing of the paralytic, one of the oldest possible depictions of Jesus from the Syrian city of Dura Europus, dating from about 235 AD. Remember, this is also the same city where they have the synagogue. Remember where it shows Moses and Aaron 
and they're depicted as black, leading the Israelites across the Red Sea. All right. All right. Again, if you look here, even at the engraving and you look at the color dark, right? Here's a good one. This one's from the second century, right? So this is from between 100 AD and two and uh, 200 AD. Notice here, look at the, I want you to look at it. Look at it. Notice here, Jesus got an Afro, right? Jesus has an Afro and you got his disciples around him. What color are they? They're all black, right? And they all got Afros and woolly hair. Second century AD catacombs of Domitila on the Via Appia Antica in Rome. The Last Supper fresco, right? So this is the earliest depiction of the Last Supper. You know, when you look at the, you know, the typical picture is that blonde haired, blue eyed Jesus and all that, that later painted in the Renaissance. This is the earliest depiction of the Last Supper, right? And notice this, and this is only like a hundred years. This is within a hundred years of Jesus' actual life, right? And they're depicted as what? Black, okay? Now, at the end of the day, we're just bringing out facts. You know, some people get butthurt over the truth of information, all right? That's you. We're just showing you facts, all right? Second century catacombs of Domitilla on the Via Appia Antica in Rome. The Last Supper fresco, which is possibly the oldest depiction of Jesus and the disciples. Notice Jesus and his disciples are black men with afros. The catacombs of Domitilla on the Via Appia Antica in Rome, named after St. Domitilla, spread over 17 kilometers of underground caves. They are the oldest of Rome's underground burial networks and the only ones to still contain bones. They are also the best preserved and one of the most extensive of all the catacombs included in their passages. Or of all the catacombs included in their passages are a second century fresco of the Last Supper and other valuable artifacts. And remember, second century means from 100 AD to 199 AD, right? Here's another depiction. Jesus in the catacombs of Rome. This is a third century fresco from the catacomb of Calix Calixtus of Christ as the good shepherd, right? So this is from, two, from around 200 AD to 209 AD. And again, he looks like a brown man, right? With woolly hair. All right, here's another. Notice here as we keep progressing, we keep getting closer to the time of Constantine. And then I'm going to show you after Constantine how they started depicting Jesus, okay? So here we have Jesus between Peter and Paul, catacombs of Marcellinus and Peter, Rome, circa 350 AD. So this was from the early 4th century, right? So the early 300s. Notice there, again, Jesus is a black man or a brown man with curly hair. Looks like he might even have dreads. And then he's in between Peter and Paul. And Peter and Paul both look like brown black men, right? And remember, Paul got confused for being an Egyptian and African in the book of Acts, right? So this all lines up with scripture, okay? This the last one here. Now, this is white Jesus. This is the earliest depiction of white Jesus, and this happens around when, right? This happens around after 350 AD, okay? Mural painting from the catacomb of Commodelia, circa 400 AD. First slash earliest known depiction of Jesus as a white man comes after nearly 300 years of him being depicted as black. What changed? Gentiles. Rome, a.k.a. Babylon the Great Whore, took over the church and gave you this image of the beast, right? For more on that, you can read, uh, re read Revelation 13, verses 4 through 18, and that's what most people in the world, this is what most people in the world today worship in ignorance, right? This is that other Jesus, right? Shalom, hopefully, hopefully we'll see y'all on Sabbath, we out.